Patrick in Sweden writes, Hi Paul, is an RC circuit and a Zobel circuit the same thing? Uh, has the loudspeaker a built-in Zobel RC circuit? And has it any benefit to have an RC circuit in the end towards the loudspeaker, even if the load already has it? <laughs> well, that's a good technical question. <laughs> so first off, let's start with some, some terminology. RC is resistor capacitor, okay? so. The typical components inside of a loudspeaker, you have an inductor, a coil, you have a capacitor, and sometimes you have resistors. And that's how, what's inside of the crossover of a speaker, okay? And usually those are frequency dividing networks that are used to make sure that the woofer doesn't produce high frequencies, that the tweeter doesn't produce low frequencies, okay? And those are dividing networks for frequencies called a crossover. A Zobel network also is a resistor and a capacitor, typically. But a Zobel network does something very different. A Zobel network is designed to smooth out, say, an impedance curve or to, uh, to damp something. So, for instance, if you take a, and it's, well, yeah, I'm trying to keep this simple and easy to understand. Let's quickly design a tweeter, uh, or, or should we do a woofer? Yeah, let's do a woofer, because that's where you typically find a Zobel network would be on a woofer. Okay, so here's a woofer, and we want to make sure that only bass goes through there, and we're gonna roll off the high frequencies, okay? So in order to do that, we're gonna have in, in the case of a woofer, instead of a resistor, we'll have an inductor. But an inductor, as you may remember, is a coil of wire that at low frequencies acts just like a coil of wire and it passes without any kind of trouble the audio signal and the power goes right into the woofer. As the frequency rises, an inductor starts to become a resistor. And at a certain point, it's just a resistor and so the power going into that inductor or into that circuit is reduced down to where it no longer even travels. The resistor is high enough that it can't get any power into the driver. And at the other end of that inductor, we have a capacitor to ground, okay? So between the two, as the impedance is rising up to where we can't put as much power into it, the whatever power is going into it is being shunted off to ground through that capacitor, okay? So, and for the moment, just to keep it simple, let's just say that that inductor is actually a resistor, okay? Let's just, that's, here we're gonna make a typical low pass filter, a resistor and a capacitor. And at a certain point, as the frequency rises, it's gonna go off through the capacitor rather than through the resistor to the driver over here, okay? So there's our low pass filter. Now, when we measure the woofer, as it's going up and down in frequency, there comes a point where its inductance, meaning it, the, this coil of wire that is actually driving the woofer, has its own impedance curve and it, it zooms way up. Instead of a four ohm driver, now all of a sudden it's a 16 ohm or 20 ohm because at a certain frequency it's rising up and has a lot to do with, with and Chris can explain it better, the box, the driver, the inductance, et cetera, et cetera. And so we may want to damp that. We may want that to be smooth. So we take a resistor and a capacitor and we put it in parallel with the woofer. Now, if you design it right, as that tries to go up, that capacitor and, uh, and, and resistor will damp that out and that is what a Zobel network does. So probably more than you wanted to know, <laughs> but that's what a Zobel network does and, and that's why we would want to use it, okay? Uh, I hope I didn't completely confuse you. Thanks for the question. Talk to you later.